Hello everybody, today we'll be talking about peptic ulcer. We'll talk about five things. Definition, etiologies, major risk factors, signs and symptoms, and physical findings. First of all, what is an ulcer? An ulcer is an area of tissue erosion, for example of the skin, or the lining of a gastrointestinal tract. An ulcer is concave due to the erosion. It is always depressed below the level of the surrounding tissue. Ulcers can have diverse causes. Now that we know the definition of an ulcer, we will talk about what is peptic ulcer. Definition. A peptic ulcer is a sore on the lining of the stomach or duodenum or the beginning of the small intestine and less commonly just above the stomach in the esophagus. A peptic ulcer in the stomach is called gastric ulcer. One that occurs in the duodenum is called duodenal ulcer. Furthermore, gastric and duodenal ulcer can both occur at the same time. H. pylori infection is the most common cause of ulcers. Frequent or long-term use of common pain medications called non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs may also lead to ulcers. Etiologies of peptic ulcer disease. First I will mention them, then I will explain how they contribute to peptic ulcer disease. 1. H. pylori infection. 2. Drugs. Lifestyle factors. 4. Severe physiological stress. 5. Hypersecretory states, which is uncommon. 6. Genetic factors. How H. pylori can cause peptic ulcer? The bacterium causes peptic ulcer by damaging the mucus coating that protects the stomach and duodenum. Damage to this mucus coating allows the stomach acid to get through the sensitive lining which is beneath. Together, the stomach acid and H. pylori irritate the lining of the stomach or duodenum and can cause an ulcer. How non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs can cause peptic ulcer? Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs travel through the body in the blood and are released in the stomach lining which cause the goblet cells to decrease the production of mucus. This reduction of mucus may cause the protective barrier to become thin, allowing the stomach acid to come in direct contact with the stomach lining and and in some cases cause damage to them. This damage can sometimes lead to an ulcer. Lifestyle factors like smoking, alcohol and little evidence suggest that caffeine intake is associated with an increased risk of duodenal ulcers. Hypersecretory states, as we said, they are uncommon. These include zollinger ellison syndrome or multiple endocrine neoplasia type 1, antral G-cell hyperplasia, systemic mastocytosis, basophilic leukemias, cystic fibrosis, short bowel syndrome, and hyperparathyroidism. What about severe physiological stress? Stressful conditions that may cause peptic ulcer disease include burns, CNS trauma, surgery, severe medical illness, sepsis, hypotension, respiratory failure. These all increase the risk for secondary stress ulceration. What are the major risk factors for peptic ulcer disease? 1. H. pylori infection, cigarette smoking, excessive alcohol ingestion, high levels of stress, chronic use of aspirin, chronic use of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, a family history of ulcer disease, aging, high serum gastrin levels, gastric hyperacidity, and number 11, chronic gastritis. What about the signs and symptoms that you can see on a patient with peptic ulcer disease? This disease course varies among individuals. Some people with peptic ulcers have no symptoms at all, while others may have symptoms. These symptoms include abdominal pain, but it doesn't always occur. The pain can differ from person to person. The pain can be as a feeling of fullness, meaning unable to drink as much fluid, hunger and as an empty feeling in the stomach, often 1 to 3 hours after a meal, mild nausea, pain or discomfort in the upper abdomen, upper abdominal pain that wakes you up at night. Other possible symptoms include bloody or dark tarry stools, chest pain, fatigue, vomiting, possibly blood, weight loss. Physical findings that you can see on a patient with peptic ulcer disease. We'll talk about physical findings in terms of uncomplicated peptic ulcer disease and in terms of perforated peptic ulcer disease. In terms of uncomplicated peptic ulcer disease, the clinical findings are few and non-specific, and these include 
epigastric tenderness, right upper quadrant tenderness, which may suggest the biliary etiology or less frequently peptic ulcer disease. Melena resulting from acute or subacute gastrointestinal bleeding, succession splash resulting from partial or complete gastric outlet obstruction. While in terms of perforated peptic ulcer disease, patients usually present with severe, sharp abdominal pain of sudden onset. Thank you very much for watching and looking forward to see you in the next video.